Hi, Mr. President. Good to see you, Scott. Hey, good to see you. Hey, good to see you. Andy, you want to see something unbelievable, biologically inconceivable? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were in England together 42 years ago. <laughs> I remember it like yesterday, huh? I did. And so Tim, we're going to be anything about it. he brought me. And we did that. That was when the, we won the entire peace process. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. TJ Hall. TJ Hall is our moderator tonight for CNN. Good. Thank you. Take a picture of TJ first. He's here. Andy. And one more. Great. And one more. He created new ways to lead change and new models to serve those who need it most. By being here tonight, Mr. President, you also modeled how to be a good friend, as you have been a long-standing friend to the man whose life we honor tonight, Ambassador Andrew Young. Yay. Thank the Bailey Center for hosting this event. Uh, Andy Young and I have been friends for more than 25 years now, and he asked me to write a forward for this book. And usually, you know, when someone asks you to do that, you ask to see the manuscript. I said yes. <laughs> then I saw the manuscript. <laughs> uh, I can't tell you. Uh, how much I, like all of you, I'm sure, admire the life he's lived and the work he's done. But the thing I like about this book is, first of all, it tells the story of a man who, late in life and covered with Laurel, decided to spend a fair amount of his time on society's most important endeavor helping young people to grow into full-blooded, whole, successful adults. And he and Kadir, I think, just did a terrific job on this, and I think it's partly because of the <coughs> wonderful relationship that they have that you will see in them. But I think it's a cautionary lesson to all of us. And the other night, Andy and I were part of a small group of people celebrating Hank Aaron's 77th birthday. And he was also a remarkable man. And I got to thinking about how we were all people that are, all of us were uh, no longer kids. And none of us were doing what made us famous. <laughs> and yet, all of us thought we had pretty good lives partly because we were free and freed of our own ambitions to pay more attention to people who were coming up. And the whole, uh, the music for the evening was provided by a young uh, cellist from Atlanta whom Hank Aaron had helped to go to Julia. And the reason I say that is that when, when you watch them in this conversation tonight, I think the real purpose of this book is to inspire all the rest of us to ask what we can do, having achieved a certain position in our lives, to help other people take the first steps toward living their own dreams. And he spent a lot of his life fighting for people's freedom to make that choice and have those options, no matter who they were or what their race is. Now, if you look at, we were just talking about way if you look at one of the really troubling aspects of this current economic and social upheaval we've been going through is it seems that for the first time gang violence is on the rise in many of our urban areas again after years and years and years of going down. It might be time for us all to ask the question of ourselves again that Andy answered for himself. 
and then talk to us about in this wonderful book. So thanks again for lighting the path for us, Andy, and Kabir, thank you for turning out so well. <laughs> you know, if it were me in his shoes, I would know I didn't have a thing to do with it, but it's nice that it all worked out so well for you. Thank you for doing the book, and thank you for being who you are. Bless you. The three of you can take your seats, and I'll do a brief introduction. Uh, well, good evening to you all. It's uh, it's odd to be here in New York. Uh, what is it? Uh, what do they call it? The center of the universe here in New York. You got three Atlanta guys up here talking to you folks. <laughs> so yeah, you know, listen to us tonight. All right. We got to get into this first. You all see this picture on the front. Those of you who have it, you see the ambassador, and you see Kabir sitting there. What you don't see, and this is why Kabir's mom is laughing, that right here on the part that's cut off, his sister is there. <laughs> now, Kabir gets the book, he gets the president to show up to a book event, she gets cut off on the cover. <laughs> so, that interview that took place that we'll be talking about when he was a kid, it was actually done with Kabir and his sister. All the time, he was asking questions. Well, mothers tell you the conservative thing. Mothers always play it safe. I told her, I said, you know, my mother pleaded with me not to work with Martin Luther King. Because uh, mothers always want you to take the easy, safe way. See? And I said, I'm not going to tell you what your mother will tell you. I'm not going to tell you what your daddy will tell you either, probably. But I'm going to tell you just like I think it is. Now, I don't want you to agree with me. And if I sound ridiculous, you can tell me I'm ridiculous. But the whole purpose of this book is to make him think for himself. But as a preacher, I have this belief that God has a purpose for each and every individual, including you. <laughs> How you find it at CNN is going to be awful difficult. <laughs> found it at CBS, <laughs> and I was saying to him that if it had not been for the, the, the courage of a lot of reporters across the South, who, as we see now in, in Egypt, uh, reporters in the South were being roughed up uh, in the 60s, just like it's happening in Egypt, and, and you, you have to find your calling. And um, my mother could not have imagined uh, me being a congressman or a mayor, she just wanted me to please get in a decent college and get out. And you didn't want to be a congressman? I didn't want to be a congressman, I didn't want to be a mayor, I didn't want to be anything, but it all happened. In fact, I've always wanted to be what I am at the time. <laughs> what are you right now, by the way? I've been trying to figure that out. <laughs> well, I said I got one more year because God didn't call Moses till he was 80. You see, I'll be 79 next month. So I got a year to work on it. Before, you get called. <laughs> Before I know what my next call is. Now, Kabir, you just mentioned your mom and your dad, the advice. You know, mom plays and say, dad will tell you one thing. Now, we all listen to our parents for the most part, but then you have this this, this this wealth of knowledge here that's also talking to you. What, what did you do with all that advice? Did you take it all? Were you listening to dad more, mom more, Master Young more? What, what did you do with all that? I, I think I was just listening to uh, listen to the news the most. Because I was a news of Hollywood when I was a young kid. And I would try to make sense of it um, with Ann Rather on television and figuring out what, what are these issues of the world. And the only person I could find had, my parents were, had, were born in India and they were, had been acclimated to America. The person I could find who could sort through African American history, being in Atlanta or what was going on in the news, was Uncle Andy. And he would challenge me. I would go over to his house. I was a, uh, he was, he's a big photographer. And he would always want me to come yeah. over and take the printer, plug it into the camera, and print out some photos. So I would go under the tech guy to his house and um, <laughs> ask a lot of questions. And one, 10 minute meeting would turn into three hours. 
And that's why this, this book kind of started. You listen to everyone here. And I think if there's one thought that I can leave you with about the message of this book, is that start where you are. You know, not everyone's going to go run and become Mark Zuckerberg or you know, become some gazillionaire or that's some bankers. Start where you are. And it's been a very settling kind of mantra to me. And every day I wake up and I say, you know, what would Uncle Andy want me to do? I think of that and I think about what Uncle Andy um, not want me to do. And I focus in the middle. And, and that's what he does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but again, we say live with music or die with noise, and it's really been a whole lot of music. So thank you for your time. Well, gentlemen, thank you. Uh,